Hi Aries, welcome to your February 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So the month of February begins with Venus going into Aquarius. For you, this is the 11th house. And what makes this particularly important is that we've already got a crowded house. Yeah, that was a great group, right? <laughs> great songs by them. And um, we have the sun there. We have Mercury retrograding in there. We have Jupiter and Mars, I mean, Jupiter and Saturn there. So especially with Jupiter and Saturn, because they have longer transits, this is going to exert an influence in this 11th house long after some of these other personal planets have long been gone. And uh, so what that means is that there's a gen uh, an actual theme for you in 2021 that relates to this house. This is a great time to say that this reading is for Aries Sun and Aries Rising. However, the timing, the exact timing and dates that I give you will not be exactly how it is for you as individuals because of uh, the degree of sun or, uh, or rising that, you know, directly corresponds with that. So that doesn't mean that all of this is negated. It just means that this is something to either uh, anticipate for the future or, you know, assume is happening right now. And also remember that this may manifest in a totally different way than I'm saying, I, I can't say every possibility for sure. That's why I really like uh, to talk about themes rather than the nitty gritty, because we don't know the nitty gritty. You know, there are so many uh, potential situations that can arise. You know, let's face it, in life, life is, um, I don't want to call it a crapshoot, but it certainly is not something etched in stone. There's such a dynamic quality about life. And I feel like the more people get obsessed with predictive techniques and get really, you know, inside baseball and all of that, that it, you know, more and more gives them this idea that they are victims of fate. And I, I feel like it can't help but do that. And that's one of the reasons why I am this <laughs> reluctant uh, predictive astrologer. But I like having fun looking at the broader themes as a, as a, as a Sagittarian, I like the overarching themes. And with this, um, 11th house activity, this involves other people. This involves the collective. Now with Aries, the challenge is because you rule the first house of the self, you are very self oriented. Some people may call you self absorbed. They may call you, <laughs> they may call you a bunch of names. Um, but don't call you late, uh, late for dinner, right? Um, and, you know, I just said I'm, I'm a Sag, so fire signs are like this. We do tend to get self-absorbed. We do tend to get caught up in our own excitement or, you know, our own passions in life. And to other people, it may seem like we don't care about what's going on with them. And, of course, that's not true. But we just, um, that's, the you know, the general way that young or masculine energy is. I mean, we can even look the, look at that between the genders a lot of times, is that men tend to kind of um, be interested in outer events and women are interested in feelings. Now, of course, if you're like, if you're a woman listening and you're a masculine sign woman being an Aries, you might, you might say, well, wait a second, am, am I a woman or am I this young energy? You're both. But you might manifest it at different times in different ways. Uh, but in general, the, the feminine energy, regardless of gender, is more concerned with the personal experience and the masculine with the outer. So this being Aquarius's house, this is going to involve the collective and it is more impersonal. It's not like one-on-one. -on -one. But even with that, you may find it challenging if you're somebody who is um, looking to work on a big project and yet you're being pulled to work with other people for some reason or to deal with other people for some reason. You may receive the assistance of other people with Jupiter there. Or you may feel some kind of duty to the collective with Saturn there. I mean, there 
you know, how this could manifest, I don't know. The 11th house is kind of a weird house for me because of what it represents and how that can possibly translate to people's actual lives. Uh, but the 11th house is also the house of hopes and wishes. From, un from what I understand, it's supposed to be the luckiest house, according to ancient astrologers, although, or, or traditional astrologers, at least. Um, I was just reading recently, they were saying, you know, about the ninth house being the luckiest house. And that makes sense to me because it's the house ruled by Jupiter. But the 11th house, yeah, I mean, they, they talk about this. Now, um, Venus moving into this house can make it so that you receive some financial support from friends. Now, it's not to say that they're just handing over money unless you have a GoFundMe that you're starting, but um, it definitely would be a great time for crowd uh, sourcing. But um, actually what I was I was thinking more of is um, just being able to, like if you're selling something, is to network with people and people that you know, friends of friends, and get the word out that way. But they, you know, uh, Venus can, can create harmony and harmonize a situation, and it makes you very popular in this house. Um, you can find love through friendships. On the 11th, we have a new moon here at 23 degrees of Aquarius. Um, it's a it's a friendly angle uh, to Aries. It's a sextile. If you are born around that 23 degree mark, even better. This is the humanitarian house. So anything, even if you're getting a job and it's in um, something that deals with helping other people, this could certainly uh, be indicative of this because the sun can be your career aspirations. Or if you're starting some kind of a program, like even a, a training program, social work, or any anything like this. This is a house of activism and um, social justice, whatever you want to call it. On the 18th, we have uh, the sun going into Pisces. And this is for you, Aries, the 12th house. And this is that month of hibernation before your solar return. So um, that can be very interesting for you. Because um, this area is about mysticism. And it's a it's a hermit type of a house. It's very, very um, contradictory to the, all of this social stuff that the 11th house represents. That's an important thing to note, too, that you may meet some people and you may call them friends, but they may be even more than that. Maybe your tribe, finding your tribe in the next couple of years. Um, but this, But with that new moon on the 11th, there might be a new group of people that you are associating with or new friends that you're making. And when we say the, these things, it sounds rather superficial, like we're just socializing and not really, there's not something deep. When in fact, it's a lot deeper than that, because these can be people who have a real um, influence on your life. And it's almost like they... And I'm saying this because of Jupiter and Saturn. Is that it transcends just acquaintances or, you know, uh, people that you party with or something like that, whatever you want to call it, people that you just have a good time with. These could be people that change the way that you think about life. And they, they kind of expand your, your, you know, view of life, you know, with Jupiter there. So I don't want to make it seem like it's just frivolous. And with the sun in the 12th house, you may feel like you want to become more of a hermit uh, temporarily, which is a good thing for an Aries person to get that downtime and that alone time. Um, and kind of tap into that part of you that may not be, um, uh, well, uh, what's the word exercised? I, I meant something else where you're, where you're really, um, 
engaging in this part, um, you know, having more solitude. Now, for some of you, you might be, maybe in your natal chart, your sun in Aries is in the 12th house. If you're, if you're listening for your sun sign, you, you may not realize that it, that it's actually in the 12th house. And, um, and that can make you a lot more of a person who is contemplative and, you know, more subduing that very strong energy that you exert. On the 20th, Mercury goes direct in Aquarius. Um, I haven't really mentioned this, um, I, cause I, I probably brought it up in the January forecast, but Mercury retrogrades through a good portion of February, uh, from the actually back from January 30th until the 20th of February. But you can see that's not that long of a transit, just a few weeks, three and a half weeks or so. And um, for you, this this has been in that house, the 11th house. And again, you know, think rethinking some of your social alliances. And why would this even happen? Well, um, you know, sometimes people belong to groups and the mission of the group changes, like even if it's an activist group and they suddenly go off the deep end, as far as you're concerned, or they're, they're doing, you know, they change what their tactics are and you just don't agree with that. Or, um, I mean, it's hard for me to, I don't be, currently belong to any group, so it's hard for me to give examples, but, um, also just with individual friends, you may, you may be rethinking if you have like a social circle, you may be rethinking this. And Aries is the sign in the, the tarot associated with the, the magician, which is really about self-reliance and, you know, coming home to the self and, um, standing in your own power. And Aries people are not, uh, are rebellious. So group situations, while you are very, um, you tend to be very extroverted. It can be one of those <laughs> love hate situations where, um, being in a group feels like you have to conform to, uh, the lowest common denominator, or you just don't like group think and stuff like that. Kind of like Aquarius itself as a sign. And so, you know, you want to be the, it's not like Larry, uh, like Leo, where you want to be, I almost said Larry, <laughs> combination of Leo and Aries. Um, it's not like Leo that wants to be the center of attention because Leo is the sun and it feels like it's the center of attention. So why not have life, uh, you know, reflect that. Aries wants to be number one. There's a co very strong competitive spe uh, streak in you guys. Uh, because, you know, your ruler is Mars and Mars is very competitive. So in a, in a group situation, you may feel the need to compete with other people in that group. And it's an unpleasant um, feeling and situation itself. So you may kind of like not like it if there's somebody, especially if there's somebody who's kind of like you that is very strong willed. And you feel like they're getting, you know, that they, they're number one and you want to be number one, the top dog. So, um, that could happen, but you may have a, um, just a misunderstanding with friends. Also rethinking your, your long range goals for sure. That could be even the most possible. And this can come about at any time when somebody, uh, maybe there's an actual event that occurs that, that makes you really rethink, you know, is this really what I want? Because I'm investing a lot of energy into this thing. And I don't know if it's really for me or if I really resonate with it anymore. And, you know, that's normal because you don't want to just do something and say, okay, I've already decided on this and I'm going to take it to the, to the end. And some of you who have Mars and Taurus might actually do that. It's like, I don't care if I don't want this anymore. I'm going to see it through. And there's no like real reason to do that. Um, okay. So on the um, 25th, we have Venus going into, 
Well, I just want to say that when Mercury goes direct, then these things can start to clear up. I think it, I think Mercury comes out of its shadow like March 12th or something like that. So a little bit of time for it to fully um, get back to its old self. Uh, on the 25th, Venus goes into Pisces. So Venus is in that second house. I, I'm sorry, in that 12th house. And I have made this... Um, I have created this idea. I don't know if this has ever transpired in the history of mankind, but when Venus in, is in the 11th house, if you meet somebody through your uh, circle of friends, but you don't want your friends to know about it. So Venus in the 12th is like, you know, being on the down mall. Now, why wouldn't you want them to know about it? Well, you don't want a bunch of people giving you their two cents about whether or not you two are meant for each other so you just want to have this little private time before you emerge a lot stronger as a couple. And of course, there can be other factors. Maybe you're coming off of a divorce. Maybe you're separated. And you just don't want people to know your business. So you're um, seeing somebody behind the scenes. Twelfth house is that, you know, a secret. can be in secret. could be meeting your soulmate. And that would be really cool. And I think there's going to be a time when Venus, I'm pretty sure that Venus is in that 12th house and we have a new moon in Pisces. And that might be even the best time so that the new moon in Pisces is around um, March 13th or so. On the 27th, uh, and it also could be like um, some kind of financial gain that's coming like good karma or I don't know how you'd call it like a secret admirer, I don't know. Um, somebody gives you money and they say, don't tell anybody, that kind of thing. On the 27th, we have a full moon at eight degrees of Virgo. So this isn't that practical sixth house, although if you're from zero to eight degrees, that might be the case. If you're, um, if you're from, you know, nine to 29 degrees of Leo, of uh, Aries, then this will likely be in your fifth house of romance. So that would actually uh, go along with love of really realizing I've met the one. That's very romantic. That too, that that's kind of a um, one, two punch there, romantic punch at the end of the month. So keep your, Eyes and ears open for that because you never know how it will show up in your life. And I and I think sometimes with this full moon, it can almost be like um, an aha moment where it's like something sinks into that thick skull of yours that, hey, this person, and maybe this is even like a platonic friend that you they're the first person that you tell all of your, you know, the good things that are going on in your life. And for some reason, you didn't see them romantically. Maybe physically, they're not your type or what have you. And uh, this could be very romantic. Um, it can also be if it's in your sixth house, this can be something that's connected to uh, a work development, a promotion, finding out that your coworkers are doing crap. Um, <laughs> I think in those cases, you would have already had kind of a, a suspicion, but it's almost like bringing out the secrets into the light of day. Okay, that's what I have for you, Aries. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I am mostly an astrologer, and I keep saying this. I don't know how long I'm going to say this because people come to me from different uh, for different reasons. Uh, they, some people are just totally not into the tarot. So they would naturally get me through this. Uh, but I actually, you know, the funny thing is I said I was primarily an astrologer during an astrology reading. I usually say that during the tarot readings just shows you how <laughs> robotic I am with these little end, end uh, messages. But anyway, um, my 
website is rainamoonastrology.com and I have a link to the types of readings I offer. If you're interested in more information uh, and would like to purchase a reading, uh, just uh, check it out below. I'd love to, um, you know, work with more of you. So take care. Bye.